Chapter 9, Schools and Delinquency. This is a narrated version of this PowerPoint presentation. Introduction. School is the primary institution of socialization. High school dropouts are more likely to be arrested than high school graduates. Most adult prison inmates are high school dropouts. The purpose of school. The goals of school are academic, teaching basic skills, general knowledge, and problem solving. Vocational teaching appropriate work attitudes and habits, and assisting with career selection. Social, civic, and cultural, encouraging good citizenship and social responsibility. Personal, emotional, and physical development. Schools are mainly under local control. School in low crime areas are likely to have fewer delinquency issues than schools in high crime areas. As diversity increases, schools struggle to meet the needs of all students and keep them in school and away from serious delinquency. Reasons schools might be unable to maintain order include inappropriate curriculum and instruction, differences between parental and school norms, lack of previous success in school, teaching difficulties, teacher perceptions and standards, and segregation. Keeping control. Schools have different ways of establishing and maintaining social control. According to Gracie, the purpose of kindergarten isn't to teach children how to write numbers and letters, but rather to establish the patterns of behavior that make learning possible. How do schools balance the need for control with the desire to foster students' creativity? One, school uniforms. Social disparity is less apparent. Two, corporal punishment. The infliction of physical harm on a person who has broken a rule or committed an offense. And three, zero tolerance policies, which are school regulations that give teachers and administrators little to no discretion in dealing with rule infractions. Preventing delinquency in school. Kids spend a lot of time in school, increasing the chances delinquency on school property. Much delinquency can be prevented by targeting hardening, which is making it more difficult for students to access the school after hours and better monitoring of the school property. From 1992 to 2003, middle and high school students were more likely to be victims of theft at school and more likely to suffer serious violence or homicide elsewhere. School bonding, the connection that students have to the school. School bonding can affect drug and alcohol use. Academic performance, antisocial behavior, delinquency and self-esteem. Major aspects can include attachment to school, attachment to personnel, and school commitment. What about teachers? No Child Left Behind, a federal law passed in January of 2002 that seeks to improve the performance of K-12 schools by placing increased accountability on states, school districts, and schools, and gives parents more choice the schools for the children their schools will be attending. Other internal pressures of teaching school include standardized and regimentation, standardized testing, tracking, and limited teacher authority. Parental involvement is important to school success. Parents possess different degrees of ability to appreciate the efforts of schools and teachers. Sometimes parental input is negative. School safety. Schools are one of the safest places for children. School crime has been elevated from local news to national news. Sometimes Teachers harm students, students harm teachers, and students harm each other. School shootings. School shootings aren't typical juvenile delinquency. Columbine is an example. No compelling motivation on the part of the attackers and inadequate law enforcement response. More pressing issues include gangs, status offenses, bullying, drug and alcohol use, theft, and fighting. School safety in terms of bullying. Bullying is defined as the psychological or physical victimization of youths by other youths. Has probably always been a part of the school experience. Schools are changing their response to bullying related to delinquency because it often includes actual crimes and can influence the victim or the bully into delinquency. Forms of bullying can include name calling, practical jokes, shoving and other forms of physical dominance, assault, and violence can escalate. Bullies might continue the strategy into adulthood. School failure and delinquency. School fa failure can have severe consequences. The school to prison pipeline includes academic failure, suspension, and expulsion. Labeling theory, and that includes primary and secondary deviance, which we've discussed in previous chapters. 
Suspension and expulsion. Suspension and expulsion separate kids with problems from society. The CDC says kids who aren't in school are more likely to fight, use drugs, smoke cigarettes, and carry weapons. Some school districts no longer practice traditional suspension and expulsion. Dropping out. Reasons that teens drop out of school include academic failure, unmet special needs, cultural issues, boredoms and questions of relevance, and delinquency and crime. Education and delinquency. Some states help delinquents get an education. For example, Delaware. Delinquents attend school 35 days more a year than regular students. Arizona. Incarcerated youths are in school year-round. California. Juvenile court school is held every day except for holidays and a few other accepted days. Florida. The education of incarcerated juveniles is left up to the local school districts. Juvenile delinquents are more likely to miss getting an education than other kids. No Child Left Behind requires that kids in juvenile justice schools get the same consideration as students in regular schools. Blomberg and PESTA. Juveniles who have high academic achievement, who attend regularly, or who get a diploma or GED are less likely to be arrested again. And juveniles with strong school attachment are more likely to return to school and not break the law again. Educating and rehabilitating juvenile delinquents requires early identification and remediation, instructional methods and classroom management, and school discipline. That's the end of this narrated PowerPoint presentation.